Hello, how are you doing? Uh, here with another video, it's a review, it's another film review. We seem to be flying with these at the minute. Uh, I want to talk about the new Beatles film that's being released, Beatles 64, uh, documenting 90, well, their first ever visit to America in February 1964. So this was produced by, Mo I can never say his name, his surname, I'm sorry if I butcher it, it's Martin Sc Scorsese, Sc I can't say it, I don't know what it is about his name, I can never say it. He obviously did George Harrison's Living in a Material World uh, documentary, which is very good, if you've never seen that. Uh, anyway, yes, this documentary, Beatles 64. Ah, right, so I'm going to, I've just literally watched it, I've, just, I've not got no notes, this is all unscripted, so let's see what happens here, this is all off the cuff. So, um, yeah, a lot of this is based from the footage that was used for the original 1964 documentary called uh, The Beatles in the USA. And that's been unav unreleased, unavailable now for years. Like, it's never been re-released or anything like that. So this is kind of a somewhat re-release of that, kind of like a re-edit of that in the same way Get Back um, was a re-edit, sort of Let It Be, that kind of thing. Uh, but before we go any further, actually, I'm going to make the video black and white. There you go. Um, it's kind of a metaphor, this. So I'll get onto why it's a metaphor in a minute. Kind of represents the film in some way. Plus, plus it's very beautiful, you know, it's very beautiful. Um, so, do you know what? I'll just explain why I put it in black and white now because this is a film of two halves for me. The portions of the film that are in black and white are fantastic. The colour sections, which is the uh, modern day film stuff, is irrelevant. So, obviously, John and George can't take part in this now. Paul and Ringo have taken part in this, they've done new interviews for this. There's not that many of them, and for as far as I'm concerned, it adds absolutely no value. I must I'm sorry, it doesn't. Um, so as soon as Paul comes on, modern day Paul, first thing he tells us, I mean, this is revolutionary stuff. It's like, it's a revelation. We've never heard this. I mean, he comes on and he's saying, uh, so John and me wrote She Loves You, and we played it to my dad, his dad, and we were singing She Loves You, yeah, yeah, yeah. And his dad was like, very nice son. But could you um, change the words to she loves you, yes, 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 because there's too many Americanisms. And I've never heard that story. And then when Ringo first comes on, he's telling us this like, really insightful story where the first time they were going flying over New York into JFK, Ringo looked out the window and he felt like an octopus was pulling them down into New York. I mean, we've never heard this stuff before. Um, no, in all seriousness, Paul and Ringo, modern day Paul and Ringo had absolutely nothing to this film um, and I'm sorry to have to say that but you know I, I'm not going to come in here and lie and say it was brilliant and Paul and Ringo really contributed a lot to this because they contribute nothing and same with all these like writers and fans and stuff who were telling their story what they think of it I don't give a shit to be honest what they think of it just show me the footage from the time the like the original black and white footage that is what I am here for uh, now I will say the George Harrison interviews from the anthology, they were very good because, please do correct me if I'm wrong here, I, I've never seen these interviews with George. Obviously, these are from the anthology because it's where he's sat in his garden with his sunglasses on. And this must be stuff that was shot for the anthology and then never used, which goes to show that there's a lot of anthology stuff that's just sitting in the, on the cutting room floor that could be released that would be, I'm sorry, more interesting than this, in my opinion. But, um, yeah, and John, there's some John interviews from the 70s, but they're nothing exciting. So, in terms of the actual main content of the film, the black and white stuff, the stuff from the time, it's really good stuff. Some of this footage I have never seen before, and the quality is fantastic. And I just wish they'd done it like Get Back, where it's just the footage from the time, and they're telling the story just using the footage from the time. I mean, could they not do that? I mean, it's about, what, an hour 40 summit, this film? And it's unnecessarily long. I found myself looking at my watch a few times watching this. And yeah, that's not a good sign really, is it? So yeah, the black and white stuff's interesting, but I feel it would have benefited if they put dates on, like they did with the calendar thing on Get Back. It would have been nice if they'd done something like that. So we kind of got the order. And if they wanted to tell the story, if they could even like newspapers and stuff, which they did in some of it to tell the story, like why George didn't go for a look around Central Park, that was explained by a newspaper thing. That's all interesting stuff. They can do it like that. Or they can just put text on the screen to explain it. We don't need modern day Paul and Ringo interviews telling us the same things or um, fans telling us stuff. It's not needed. 
Um, but one of the big takeaways I had for this was just, oh, well, I knew this already, but just how hilarious the Beatles are. Just, I mean, they talk about it themselves, the fact they're Liverpudlians, the Scousers. It's just their humour, it's the way they are. As, and they say it's Scouse. I don't think it's necessarily Scouse. I think it's just Northern England. I think a lot of Northern England are like that, the way they are. And it's just insane seeing like the mania around them and just how normal they were. I mean, while all this craziness is going on, Paul, for most of this film, has gone around doing stupid voices. He's doing like Yorkshire accents or American accents and stuff like that. It's really interesting stuff. Um, now, for the musical portions of this, um, we've got performances from the Ed Sullivan show and the Washington Coliseum show. And George Martin has remixed uh, those concerts, uh, the audio for these, and they sound fantastic. And guess what they've not released? They've not released any of this on streaming or on vinyl or anything. Instead, we've got them stupid American albums. I'm not, I'm not going to go on about them again, but I've done a video back in September or something, ranting on about how irrelevant they are, that release. Um, so it would have been, hopefully it comes at some point because it would be nice to have the audio of the um, Washington Coliseum and the Ed Sullivan Show remix because it sounds very good, especially the performance of this boy, uh, which I think they did on the Sullivan Show in Miami, which is towards the end of the film. It sounds really good and I'm, I was listening, obviously I wasn't listening through headphones because I was watching it on the TV. But I could clearly pick out John's voice, Paul's voice, George's voice on the three-part harmonies. It was very, very good. I really did enjoy that part of the film. So I don't want to go on too long here, to be honest, because, yeah, there's you know, I've not watched anyone else's videos either, so I don't know what other people are saying about this. I'll watch them after this. But for me, personally, it's not really anything spectacular, this film. And to be honest, I wasn't really that interested in it when it was announced, because... I don't think we needed this. I mean, what, less than 10 years ago, we got that Ron Howard film, Eight Days a Week, and I went and seen that in the cinema, and again, I remember watching that and thinking, there's not really any need for this, because, you know, like the Ron Howard Eight Days a Week film, that annoyed me, because it like really, really quickly brushed over 1962, 1963, and then like spent half the film, if not more, talking about 1964, and it's like, well, fair enough, I get it, you're an American, but, 1963 in my opinion is a more significant year historically for the Beatles than what 1964 is all that really happened in 64 was they went to America but in terms of their actual rise to fame and everything like the proper mania starting that was 63 and they never really do anything to explore that it's always 1964 I mean it's the second thing really in the last 10 years we've had about this I mean is it needed but Overall, I still stand by If you want to find out the Beatles history, you watch the anthology. There is absolutely, if you're a casual fan who wants to hear the history of the Beatles, don't bother with this, don't bother with eight days a week, watch the anthology. If you're a casual fan or a hardcore fan, you know, get the anthology remaster, get that restored. There's absolutely no need for this. Um, yeah, literally, other than the actual Beatles films from the times, the Magical Mystery 2, A Hard Day's Night, etc. The only real Beatles films you need, like, documentaries is uh, anthology and uh, get back that's it everything else irrelevant this is irrelevant and i don't think i'll ever watch this again to be honest it'd be nice like i say the black and white footage is good but otherwise yeah so i've not really got much more else to say than that other than it. if you haven't seen it give it a watch obviously make your own mind up but for me personally this is nothing spectacular it just continues this trend at the minute of disappointments from apple you know everything since revolver the revolver box set in 22 after that it's all just been downhill i mean other than now and then last year we had the red and blue album which no one asked for this year we've had nothing really nothing and i know um people are going, Ooh, we've had the american albums um like i say we've had nothing this year that's not a major release really is it compared to some of the stuff we've had you know, all we've had this year, thankfully, is the Lennon and the Harrison estate pulling through with mind games and living in the material world. And Paul, I suppose, as well, with uh, one hand clapping. But the Beatles themselves have been really lacking this year. So hopefully, hopefully this time next year, I'll finally be talking about Rubber Soul. The remix of Rubber Soul, the, delu the deluxe release of that, which will hopefully come next year for the 60th anniversary. And not some stupid box set for the Beatles 1965 US albums. Or a Beatles 65 documentary focusing on Shea Stadium and all of that, which 
probably will and probably will get some at Shea stadium -y next year but we will see anyway i'm rambling on so yeah beat of 64 personally i don't think it's anything spectacular still stand by watch anthology to me this is another eight days a week i'll never watch it again so yeah sorry to be negative but a apple aren't giving me anything to be positive about at the minute they just make me negative 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 that's all i am about the beatles at the minute and i hate it because i love them I'm watching it I, when I'm watching this and the songs are coming on. I'm thinking this is the they're the greatest band ever, and you've seen the humour and everything of them, and it's brilliant. But yeah, I'll stop rambling now. So thank you very much for watching. Let me know what you think of it. Like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. And uh, yeah, I will see you on a future video. Ta-ra!